we will kick things off here. Is everyone ready to go? Ready to talk a little bit about some inventory and asset management? Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, so, um, oh, jumping the gun there. <laughs> Give everybody a little sneak peek. So uh, my name is Tim Brown. Welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar. Um, today's webinar um, uh, about inventory through a single pane of glass. Uh, we're talking to you today about asset management uh, as well as uh, integrated help desk and how that can benefit your um, school district. Um, we hear a lot from the districts that we talk to uh, about um, really having to go to multiple different systems. Um, so we got together today with our partners at Howard uh, to talk to you a little bit about how um, important it is for districts to be able to operate through a single pane of glass. And before we jump in, uh, I'm going to let our friends at Howard say hello and introduce themselves. Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's almost afternoon here, I guess. It's 1130. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jamie Gotchling. I cover um, a few of you guys, I'm sure, that are on. I'm everything kind of the southernmost portion of California. So um, James, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself as well? Sure. My name's uh, James Collis, and I cover pretty much North Los Angeles all the way up the coast. And I've been privileged to work alongside Tim, Patrick, and Kristen. I uh, have worked with districts with all three of them, and that's why I continue to preach and support Hayes software as being the best solution for school districts in really preparing for 21st century and making your district uh, ready for the next five to 10 years. Awesome. And James, I'm gonna do just, you continue on, James? Go ahead, go ahead, James. I'm, gonna go, I'm just gonna go ahead and go over just a couple of things that we do. For those of you that don't know um, what Howard entails, we are a one-stop shop. So anything you could look for as far as ink cartridges all the way to installation, to software, um, asset management, we do it all. So here you can see um, several of the different categories that we cover, um, professional development, software, of course, um, eSports, physical security. Uh, like I said, we do it all. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it back over to you guys, thanks. Absolutely, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, James. And we are excited to be presenting with you both today. Um, my name is Tim Brown, as I said, I'm with Hayes Software. Uh, I've been with the company for over three and a half years. Um, and uh, really my focus is in Southern California. Um, and so uh, as Jamie and James both said, I've uh, had the opportunity to partner with them working with several districts uh, in the Southern California area. Um, and with that, I'm gonna let my uh, colleagues from Hayes introduce themselves as well. Uh, hey guys, my name is Kristen Burrows. I cover Northern California. I've been with the company for a little over five years now. So excited to have a conversation with you guys today. Thanks. Yeah, my name is Patrick Wynn. I've been with Hayes for almost three years now, and my focus is sort of um, the Central Valley area of California, you could say. And yeah, looking forward to uh, having you guys here. Awesome. So uh, before we get started, uh, I want to just say that um, all of us, we love questions, we love discussion, we love comments. <laughs> Uh, so if there is at any point anything that you would like to raise, feel free to uh, raise your hand uh, or just put a question into the chat. We'll all be monitoring it throughout the presentation and uh, happy to answer or provide any information that we can as we move along. Uh, we uh, definitely don't like hearing ourselves talk. We love as much input from, from the districts as well. So uh, with that being said, just a little bit about Hayes Software and where we come from in this space. Uh, we have been around for 30 years. Uh, we were started by an education professional, Gene Hayes, uh, who was a, a school administrator and basically just saw the need for a greater inventory control solutions. And so that's how he started Hayes with his son, uh, Michael. And, and since then, we have only worked with school districts for the past 30 years. And that's how we continue to grow uh, our organization and our solutions is really taking the input that we receive from school districts and then applying it to our, our software and continuing to grow it to meet the uh, changing needs of school districts. Uh, we work with districts uh, all over the country, uh, but like you said, we're here today to uh, talk about how we help uh, California school districts. 
really in this uh, past year, uh, we've seen a lot of change in districts um, have because of the pandemic. So what we want to talk about is that full life cycle of your district's assets from um, really from the, the time that those assets are brought into the system to distribution and collection, whether it's out to individuals, which we all know uh, happened uh, uh, really all across the state and the country last year through one-to-ones. Um, and then uh, also any other assets that you want to be able to track in your inventory system as well. And then once you have that data, uh, really how are you utilizing it? How are you communicating with other systems? How are you integrating with other systems to really maximize uh, your solutions and really um, you know, save the district time uh, by being able to grab everything um, and having your systems communicate through one system? Um, from there, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about you know, once those assets are in the hands of students and staff members, especially in these remote learning environments, how are we supporting? How are we offering support um, through an integrated help desk solution? Um, and then talking about those other integra integrations as well as uh, MDMs and of course, student information systems as well. Um, and then the big picture as, as we move from you know, your asset management life cycle is data. Um, how are you maintaining that healthy data? So again, Focus today really being that uh, that single pane of glass. So, what systems can you integrate with your asset management solution? We know the SIS is a big one. We're going to talk about that today. Um, we're going to talk about MDMs. We'll talk about the integrated help desk. But what other systems out there um, that that you would like to see integrated with your asset management system as well? We know that we work with several districts out there where we can integrate with their fixed asset or their purchasing system. Um, again, to to have that data flow in and out um, to create more efficiencies in your solutions for you, and then. Once you have that data coming in from your different solutions, um, being able to maintain it through physical inventory audits. You know, does your solution that you have, um, does it allow you to conduct uh, uh, inventory audits in an efficient way? Um, and then also maybe, maybe you're, you're shrugging your shoulders, your arms are in the air, like we don't even, we're not even ready for that. You know, we don't even know where our data is or how it's being housed or if it's accurate. Um, you know, the importance of even having a third party team um, that, only focuses on that inventory, being able to come out there and, and, and really get that inventory uh, baseline for you and put it into your system. Um, so with that, again, let me encourage any type of questions that you have, um, please put in the chat or uh, feel free to interject. And with that, we're gonna turn it over to Kristen to let her talk about uh, what the system looks like. Awesome, thanks, Tim. And listen, I'm getting like an unstable connection. So if I start cutting out, let me know and I'll turn my video off and see if that helps. Uh, so what we like to start off with in that life cycle is the uh, very beginning of, you know, dealing with the current data that you have. So depending on how accurate your data is, typically anything above 75%, we encourage utilizing that data to start um, with the implementation process. As you see here, with your um, the data that's provided as an example, you have product names. So product names would also be considered a drop-down feature. So keeping in mind in the beginning with our data conversion specialist working with you guys to get the data in there the way you like to see it, but also keep those product names clean so that if somebody was to come in behind you and add a thousand more Chromebooks from Howard, they'd have to select the product names that are given and not add new ones unless they had permission to. So it really helps the reporting side as far as getting your um, inventory counts. As you see here with the Dell Chromebook 11 as the example given, as you select that, it then narrows down to show you all campuses that have that device. So really a great quick tool to have to oversee that what's total inventory, what's in use and what's available. So really great example for that um, is to be like when around testing time and if they need to move devices around instead of doing quick purchases at the last minute. Now, one of the things from the, uh, from the product catalog, it then shows, a, uh, digs a little bit deeper onto the details of each specific asset. So keeping in mind, Tim, if you wanna move over to the next one, keeping in mind that with that detail to each field that you see on the screen, it's going to be able to have a report run on it. So every asset that's added to the system can never be deleted. So always keep that in mind as well. So if somebody is in there that maybe isn't quite sure what they're doing, um, just know that they can't delete your data, which is pretty important. But the idea behind that is to have the ability to archive your inventory. So let's say it's an E-rate funded asset that's you know got some kind of crazy audit coming up and they want 10 years back of information. It's still gonna be in the system, it just won't be in your current inventory. 
So as you see here from the top left, you've got tag, serial, site, location. Now keep in mind from a one-to-one -one process, if it were that location shows room, room seven, it would actually show a student or staff member's name. And that comes from the integration with your SIS. So uh, the asset type status, so being able to do drop, uh, drop down on the right-hand side, showing whether it's um, available, in use, in repair, lost or stolen, just depends on the, um, where it is in its life cycle. And then one of the new features that we recently added is the ability to have an API built into the system with Google Admin and Jam. So as you see on the right-hand side, all those different fields, we're able to pull that information from those two systems automatically and bring them back into this centralized location. So once again, bringing more information into one spot as the single pane um, motto goes along. Now, keep in mind, there are a couple different things with each one, and we can talk more detail offline as far as like which fields come over from which one, uh, but we wanna provide all the options that you see here on the screen. Now you do have four custom fields with each type of product. So keep in mind that if it was a laptop, it would be four custom fields, such as a computer name, operating system, image date, et cetera. But if it was a projector, it would be four different custom fields. Maybe it's the last time the bulb was replaced, things of that nature. Now below, there's several other things that are tracked. It was just hard to fit it all in one, one piece, but funding information is pretty important when it comes to reporting. So keep in mind that we're able to track the funding sources. So funding source is gonna be another drop-down feature that's created by your district. So anything from E-rates, Title Ones, any kind of special funded assets you wanna keep in there, you'd have the ability to track it from that piece. But you have everything from um, your split for state and federal funding. You've got your account code, purchase date, purchase price, expiration, so helping from a forecast standpoint. And then also we have some general information at the bottom of that piece that lists out uh, what feeds into our e-receipt, so suggested price, things of that nature. Now, if you do notice on the uh, next piece um, from, that's fine. I was gonna say this really quick on that vendor piece. So if you show where it has the HP, it's a huge thing to know that through Howard, you would have a rep or uh, the Howard name would be there. So it's a great quick reference tool to say, hey, Howard, you know, I, um, I need to purchase some more of these Chromebooks. Do you have anything that's similar to this as optional and maybe different pricing, maybe it's better pricing. And that's all just quick there at your fingertips. So it's really great information to have. Now, as we jump over to the actual one-to-one -one process. So as you see, we've gone through all the details that are what tracked on each asset. As you are um, issuing out devices to students and staff members, which has been a really big high demand this past year, we also wanna show how we track that moving forward. So as we jump over to the one-to-one um, -one piece, like I was mentioning before, with that integration with your SIS, we're able to make it as simple as pro uh, possible. So basically if there's a student ID card has a barcode label on it, you're able to scan that barcode label It automatically pulls the student information up it shows what current inventory is assigned to that person, as well as any fees and fines. So immediately you know if there's anything outstanding, maybe it's partial payments that haven't been paid in full, things of that nature, uh, but all there as soon as that student ID uh, card is scanned. And then once the student ID card is scanned and you're issuing out another device to the student, you would just scan the uh, barcode label on the asset and then off it goes. The idea behind the, um, the distribution receipt that's given is to give you a couple different features. And I believe we have that to share as well. As you scan the asset tag, you have the ability to um, pro pro uh, provide this distribution receipt. So as you see here, you've got it completely customized around your district's needs. So your school logo, the top left corner, it's gonna have all of your do's and don'ts in the background. It's gonna pull over that general information that I mentioned before from the detailed screen, suggested price. It's gonna also show the accessories. Accessories are big because what it does is it actually provides um, the ability to track anything that's non-tagged. So things like a case or an AC adapter. And in that way, they have a clear understanding of what they're required to bring back as they bring back the laptop. So power adapters can be pretty costly. So having the ability to keep that, keep that in, um, in the same place as well. Now, as a student or staff member signs, whether it's on a mouse pad, uh, on a Chromebook or a tablet, doesn't matter. They then have a couple of different options. They click accept signature. This can then be printed off on the spot or with everybody trying to go non-contact right now. Uh, they're actually focusing a lot on just being able to email that receipt to the student and parent. Now with that, you also have the ability to keep this uh, electronically copied under the attachments tab back on the detailed screen. 
So just keeping in mind anything that goes along with that uh, device. So whether it's a copy of the distribution receipt, maybe it's a picture of a cracked screen, a police report, things of that nature. Now, one thing I probably did skip over before we dive into the get help, and I do apologize. Um, I've, I've been watching my internet connection go in and out. On the detailed screen, Tim, if you don't mind jumping back for a minute, and like I said, my apologies. On that detail screen, one of the biggest pieces is gonna be all the different things that are tracked from that side. So as we showed those fields, the status history at the top, moving those tabs from, from left to right, status history is gonna give you a list of all, the, basically it's a breadcrumb trail. So anytime it's been scanned, anytime it's been moved in the system, so if you're physically missing a device at that moment in time, it's a really great place to start to see who scanned it or who touched it last. The audit history works the same exact way. It lists out all of the audits that, that asset was part of. The ticket history is a really big piece that which Patrick's getting ready to dive into. But what it does is allow all the tickets that have been created on that device to be in a centralized location. So it will list out all of those tickets that have ever been created on this one asset. One of the great stories behind that is um, ability to, uh, the district in California, Sequoia, uh, he got a box of uh, some type of projectors and they were having a lot of problems with them. He was able to see that ticket history tab and know right away which ones that were having the issues that were all similar and gave that to the rep as far as like, here's the issues and they got those replaced really quick. And he had that to like think in a couple of seconds, if I'm not mistaken. Now the components tab is the last piece I wanted to mention before we jump into the get help. The components tab really helps you from a charging cart standpoint. So I know right now it might not be as of important depending on hybrid and who's in person and who's doing virtual. But once everything does get back to normal, hopefully, uh, with that components tab, what it does is allow a parent-child relationship. So if you have a charging cart with a barcode label on the outside, you'd be able to scan that barcode label. The charging cart would populate here. And then under that components tab, it would list out those 20 Chromebooks that are assigned to it. So that way you're not pulling each one out individually and scanning them to move them from room to room or building to building. It's scanned one time. But do keep in mind that all of the Chromebooks that are assigned to that cart do have this information tracked in the system. It would just have that location as the Chromebook. And I think that's it. And I, like I said, I'm sorry guys for jumping back, but let's go ahead and dive in. So obviously the life cycle, um, once the, the students have the devices in their hands, the next thing that happens is where the tickets come in. So I'll let uh, Patrick jump in. Yeah, thanks Kristen. So obviously tracking devices um, and components is critical and you know just as important though as being able to support these devices, right? Um, how does a student or staff member raise their hand and ask for help, which um, is a bit more of a challenge now with distance learning. So really the, the priority is to make it as, as efficient and as simple as possible for, uh, for end users to be able to submit tickets. So um, with ease of use being the primary goal, um, we want to make sure that they can reach out, whether that's via email, whether that's via um, reaching out to the technician to create a ticket from scratch, or as what you see here is the, the staff or student portal. So um, because we would integrate with whether it's, you know, your single sign-on through Active Directory or Google SSO, um, they could just sign into the portal here. Um, and the devices that are checked out to them, because, again, we integrate with TipWeb IT through that single pane, and TipWeb IT will integrate with your SIS, uh, we know what devices are checked out to the student once they log in. So um, they log in here and they're just gonna click on the icon of the asset that's checked out to them. Um, if it's neither of the two or however many, they can just click on that green create a ticket button to create a ticket from scratch um, if none of the above apply. And then furthermore, on top of that, they can also see the, the current status of tickets um, that are currently outstanding down there at the bottom. So um, they don't have to um, bug you, the technician, uh, with calls or emails. They can see uh, the current status of any of their outstanding tickets. And then there's also a drop down there on the left. So they can actually sort that and actually view old tickets or tickets that have already been resolved as well. So um, again, we want to create as much transparency as possible, make it easy for either the staff or the student to submit a ticket and ask for help. Um, and again, as Kristen alluded to, um, any uh, any ticket submission, uh, the history of all tickets, you know, they're assigned to both the, the student's history as well as the device history. So um, that's from procurement all the way to disposal and that integration with Tip of IT, uh, which appears in that tab that she mentioned, you can easily see all the history of the ticket submissions and see what the priorities were, uh, priorities were um, who solved the issue, um, and the data was uh, resolved, et cetera. So, 
from that's from the end user's perspective. And so we also want to make sure that from the technician's perspective, it's easy to, to utilize as well. So uh, from the technician's point of view, um, we want to make sure that you can have quick, easy access to see uh, not just the outstanding tickets that are assigned to you, but also ones that are um, assigned to the entire district, um, the ones that are maybe unassigned that are just kind of uh, floating out there before they get routed to someone specifically. And we also want to make sure that um, you have quick access to see you know, what the ticket is, um, the data is submitted, what the status is, and that's what you'll see there down at the bottom. And so these boxes, you can actually um, sort them, right? You can filter them. You can also sort them, whether that's by problem type, um, whether that's by urgency, the current status. Um, the last date it was actually edited, which is a new feature. So um, again, we want to make sure that we provide as much customization as possible to allow you to you know, tackle the tickets however uh, you prefer, whether that's um, handling maybe the easier, lower hanging fruit uh, to start your day, or maybe starting with the higher priority one. So uh, we want to make sure that's quick and uh, easy for you to view. So obviously, you know, it's going to be helpful to understand as well um, what the effect of distance learning is going to have on you know, the ability to solve tickets, uh, respond to them in time. Obviously, there'll be some changes there. And it's also important to be able to determine you know, where the efficiencies and maybe the opportunities to improve lie. And so um, we can do that with reporting analytics. So these are nearly uh, a dozen different reports from, you can see here, average open time, uh, average resolution time, tickets resolved by technician, tickets by problem type. And so what you can do is you can really start to trend the data uh, you can pick up on patterns and gain some pretty valuable insight to help you make uh, decisions that are informed um, and backed by data. So um, this data it can be expressed in quite a few different ways. Um, here is just one example of a um, pretty basic graphical representation. Um, but you can also put this data into a, uh, you can see there a bar graph, maybe a column graph. And you can even start with the raw data if you enjoy manipulating pivot tables and working with formulas. So. Um, again, it's going to be customized to whatever your preference is. And so the goal here is really to enable you, the technician, uh, with insight and help you make decisions to become more efficient and more effective moving forward. So obviously, when it comes to interpreting data, it's also helpful to understand how to be able to, to budget and forecast on the inventory that you're, that you're supporting. So uh, I'll let Kristen speak uh, a little bit to that. Well, what we'll do in the meantime, Kristen could be, for those of you, uh, we are based here in, in Austin, Texas. And um, if you've been watching the news at all lately, you've probably seen uh, the winter storm, uh, which could even be an understatement for winter storms that we've been going through right now. So um, my, I just went 67 hours without power and literally got power back last night, internet last night. So there are many, many households right now currently around uh, throughout Texas that are still struggling with power. It seems that Kristen is having one of those right now. And normally in any other circumstances, I would make many jokes about Kristen not having power, but we're going to let that go. So um, I'll pick up and kind of talk a little bit more about what Patrick was leading into here for Kristen. So we're talking about, you know, we're talking about really, again, that, that, that full life cycle history, being able to uh, um, really operate through that single pane of glass uh, forecasting for your district's needs. So uh, um, future purchases, being able to, you know, bring information over from purchasing systems or fixed asset systems or your MDMs, knowing exactly what your inventory is, where it is, how it's being utilized. Um, you know, we've seen as we, uh, um, you know, one of the things that we've seen is uh, Google stopping uh, support of their devices after a certain period of time. They've put those uh, model end of life uh, um, dates on, on their devices. And so being able to forecast when those, uh, um, when those end of life cycles are happening uh, along just with when your refresh cycles. So giving you access to uh, reporting and data um, to utilize, to make the best decisions, to make the most fiscally responsible deci decisions for your district um, is super important. And so uh, our system has very uh, robust reporting uh, functionality that allows you to create reports with basic filters of, of site names, locations, grade levels, students, uh, staff members, um, but then you can get very granular with how you want to create those reports. Um, so you have the option to do that with advanced filters as well. 
um, and get really granular with dates and dollar amounts and funding sources as well. Um, so you can run those reports, uh, create those reports, you can save those reports so that you don't have to go back in and recreate them every time. And then from there, you can actually schedule those reports to be emailed out uh, on a regular basis, either weekly or monthly, um, and they don't even have to be users in the system. So you can uh, have those uh, set up to go out to board members or your team members or uh, the executive committee at the school district. Um, if there's anything that information that need need on a regular basis, you can set that up in the system. Um, but again, you can get really granular. We also have some CAN reports um, in the system as well that really, really help um, to, to streamline uh, your reporting capabilities within the software. As you talked, we talked about um, in the beginning when we think about that that life cycle. Um, along with with reports are the ability to conduct uh, physical inventory audits. So when we talk about knowing exactly what you have, um, whether it's capturing it through the catalog, the asset detail, um, or in your reports, you you then once you have that baseline inventory, you have the ability to then go out um, in the solution, send teams out to actually conduct physical inventory audits. Um, there are districts out there that, that maybe are doing this a little bit or, or they're afraid to do this um, because they've just never had to experience it before because maybe they're just, they're, they're uneasy or they're unsure of what their inventory looks like. Um, our team will help you establish that inventory and from there um, really help you to be able to conduct physical inventory audits throughout, um, throughout the district. And we have a number of different ways to do that in the system. Uh, the one that, that uh, I definitely would love to highlight is our RFID technology. Uh, you have the ability to utilize um, RFID tags, uh, which you can put on everything from your books to uh, switches to projectors, anything in hard to reach places. Um, you can utilize it for other departments, maintenance op in operations, uh, transportation on buses. Um, so again, the way that works is, is those uh, tags, those radio, those RFID tags, um, they're passive tags, they have antennas on there. And when you come in with the RFID scanner, the scanner actually wakes those tags up. Um, so that the battery life on those is extended as well. And then from there, you simply just pull the trigger and it picks up the RFID tags um, and you don't have to go around and scan everything individually. Plus it's a safety, uh, it helps with safety uh, um, uh, measures as well because you don't have to get up on desks or ladders or chairs uh, to scan things in, in hard to reach places. Uh, Baldwin Park Unified, uh, who have been uh, Tip Web IT users uh, for some time now, uh, recently, uh, just purchased uh, um, RFID tags to put on um, security cameras as well. So again, it's it's something that that you can utilize to uh, quickly conduct audits. However, it's not a necessity in the solution. You can simply do it with a barcode scanner uh, and the app on your phone uh, by syncing the two, and then going around to each individual room, scanning the assets in the room. And then once you're done with your fun little game of hide and seek, you're able to produce these uh, audit summary reports that give you an idea of exactly what you found. Is it where it's supposed to be? Is it continually showing up missing? So maybe it's time to archive that uh, asset um, until in the solution until it, uh, maybe we find it in a later audit. It's also great because if you find something in an audit that was purchased uh, with special funds, uh, the system will alert you to that. So it'll let you know, hey, we've got to get this back into a specific area or a specific room where it belongs. Um, or you know what, it's okay. We can change its status right here, right now in the software um, to the, that it's good to be where, it's, where we found it at. So again, being able to, um, once you have that data, uh, being able to maintain that healthy data um, through physical inventory audits. And Tim, just to chime in real quick, we've done physical inventory audits, right, for quite a few districts throughout California, um, North, Central, uh, Southern, right, like LA County, Alphabet, um, Natomas, Tehachapi, and yeah, quite a few others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I know one of the things that's really important, too, is having that great relationship uh, like we have with Howard. Um, so, you know, I know James, you and I, one of the ones that comes to mind uh, always right away is Victor Valley and, and being able to, um, you know, uh, utilize the partnership that we have there um, for whatever, helping them forecast for their future purchases, uh, but then bringing us in to be able to, um, you know, help uh, upload that data into the, into the system right away. 
you'll see here, um, you know, we have grown tremendously in the state of California, um, especially uh, over the last several years. Uh, we are now working with over 70 plus school districts in, uh, in the state. Um, and what's great about our solution is, is that we can work from, with single site um, schools, uh, smaller districts, all the way up to the largest districts in the state. Um, we work with some of, we work with Anaheim, Bakersfield, um, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, Laguna Beach. Um, so again, you'll, our solutions are scalable to fit the needs for each individual district. Um, and with that, I uh, want to open it up to any questions uh, that we have either in the chat or, um, or if anybody wants to come off mute and ask any questions, now is the time. Jamie, James, any final comments from, from you all before we uh, wrap this up? I would just like to say uh, thank you again, uh, Monique and Megan, thank you for taking the time to learn more about Hayes. And of course, the partnership that we have uh, with, your, with your districts and Howard, uh, we wanna continue to strengthen that with great partners such as Hayes and that show, that show true value to you and your districts. So uh, thank you and thank you Hayes for allowing us to be part of this as well. Absolutely. Jamie, anything that you want to add? Nope. Thank you guys so much for your time today. We really appreciate this. So. Uh, awesome. Well, listen, uh, obviously, if you do have any questions that come up after the fact, please reach out to Jamie or James. Um, again, we have a phenomenal partnership with, with both of them and with Howard overall. And, and, and so uh, reach out to them with any questions. We're happy to set up time uh, to take a deeper dive into the software uh, with you. And with that being said, thank you so much for taking the time today. Uh, and we look forward to working with you in the future.